I don't know how to describe it other than like like a demon type of sound. But it's silhouetted, hulking, every bit of five and a half feet wide, 13 to 14 foot tall, pitch black. The one thing that ran through my mind when I had this encounter was I don't have a big enough gun. Your host, two-time witness and field researcher for more than 40 years, William Jevnik. Welcome to Creek Devil. Welcome to Q&A, everyone. Uh, Tom, I don't know what you have in the way of questions. I've got a couple from one of our listeners. Apparently, he sent one of our friends in the UK, I think. Um, I, can't, I don't know. Well, I've got not. some good ones here. Okay. Well, this and, one, and I this just one, real quick, I just wanted. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Bill. Oh no, go ahead. I, well, just, I was just going to say I want to thank everybody for sending them in. These are excellent questions, and believe it or not, this show is your show. It's not ours. So, you guys, if you got a question, you got some curiosity, you want to know something about Bigfoot, um, shoot it our way. Fire up your email and send it to questions at creekdevil.com and we will we'll bring them up on the show and there, there's no bad questions that's so, right well that's this one said. actually isn't a question actually what this one he's referring to uh it's uh, his username is on a fixed income and apparently his his message didn't get through because he says apparently my emails haven't made the cut so again uh, will any chance of a long show addressing what we actually know about Sasquatch? Uh, he says, I think it would be very useful and encouraging critical thinking on the topic. Go through and denote what evidence we have that is solid fact, anecdotal historical, traditional stories, sightings corroborated with physical evidence, and other witnesses present. Non-corroborated, heard only or nothing but the word of a reporter, hearsay, imaginary, factual, unproven, insufficiently analyzed, hoax, speculation, conjecture, and or rumor, because frankly, as far as I know, we have little more than a ton of footprints, one close to unimpeachable film, and a whale of a lot of sighting reports and conjecture stacked insupportably high. What do we know, and how do we know it, and where does it come from? So I think his suggestion is we do a show... On, on what what I just read, what he said there, and I think that's probably a good idea. We could do that. Uh, so that's not really like a it, question, yeah. but yeah, I think that would make a great episode. So uh, on a fixed income, sorry we missed your earlier messages, but we want to make sure our listeners are not forgotten or missed. So uh, we will do that. So Tom, what do we have in the way of questions for this week? All right, and I'm going to throw something out there. This is uh, an idea that Will and I have just tossed around very recently. And uh, it's not going to happen, you know, this week. But down the road at some point, we talked about the possibility of doing uh, an online course on Bigfoot based on Will's book. Um, I think it's the uh, Bigfoot Field Guide or Bigfoot, Bigfoot Field Work 101. Bigfoot Field Work 101. And uh, if you guys, if this is something that you're interested in, shoot us an email, questions at creekdevil.com, and say, you know, I would love it if you guys would provide an online course on doing, you know, doing field work were, and were getting we, information on Bigfoot. Were we talking about that being a free course to listeners? I don't know. I have no idea at this point. <laughs> I know um, we tossed around some ideas. I, 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 I think, where we were I think going it with. is because that's, yeah, it's something that uh, YouTube is actually encouraging. Right, right. Are so we these could, uh, online courses. So, and that's a starting point for us. We do. We thought, well, let's, let's start with this and then we'll branch out into other things. So that's something we're seriously talking about, folks give you providing some online course yeah. work for you guys and you know maybe each one nothing extremely long or elaborate but we'll go through all the necessary things that if you want to do these things this will, this will be a great benefit to you well it would and, and it helps you to eliminate the superfluous stuff that's uh you know i you know, kind of a you don't need to do maybe a waste of time out in the field and you can focus on the things that are really um uh, 
you know, really important and meaningful. Well, so, and, a good, and a good point would have been like when we talked about on this past campfire talk where, you know, people have gone out and they find tracks, but, you know, there's, there's not a lot of information because they didn't know the things to do to properly document those, you know, in any meaning, real meaningful fashion where it would mean something to other people and give them good information and reference. You know, and, and I'm just going to say ditto to that, Will, because the very first footprints that I ever found, I'd, I'd heard the, the vocalizations before, but I'd sent you and another gentleman who had been on the show in the past pictures of that shredded stump, about an eight foot stump. And, you know, this was like when I just started with you and you're like, go back and take a look at the ground. Well, Hallelujah, there's an idea. And bingo, <laughs> all around that shredded stuff. Well, it, it was good because within 60 seconds, I found this huge footprint. It was obvious what it was. I told my buddy, get over here now. You take a look at this. I said, I need a second opinion. I've got 85, 90%. I know what this is. And he was like, oh, man, yep. And so anyway, um, it's so, it's the difference it'll, between think, like this this person who emailed said you know on a fixed income said, well there's a lot of unsupported information out there there's tons of it, and and unsupported means, well you know witness A went out and saw you know A B and C whatever, but there's no pictures there's no measurements there's no, nothing really documenting it whereas let's say like with Annabeth's footprints and Alan her good friend went there, and she videoed the tracks and made a count. Alan went there and measured, you know, all the particulars, not just the width, length, and depth of the footprints, but also the step and stride measurements and did that correctly. Um, it makes a big difference because that stuff you can actually show people and we have all the information that goes with it rather than just anecdotal information that people say, well, you know, anybody can make that up. Well, whereas with this one, we've got film, we've got the measurements, we've got all the pertinent information uh, and you can't say that's made up then. Right. And we've talked to our friend, the judge, Tony, in the past about this evidence. And he said there's more than sufficient evidence in a court of law to put somebody away based on this information. So you got eyewitness, you got uh, photographs, um, you know, some physical evidence. So, all right. Well, let's listen, get to the with questions. That said, Will, should we jump in? <laughs> let's All jump right. in. Um, we'll jump in. And this is from uh, a fan of the show. Her name's Janice. And she's got a couple questions. Janice, thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate it. And I'm glad you sent us a couple of different questions. Okay. Janice says, still listening to the show every week, and she really enjoys it. My question is something I've been wondering about for the last couple of weeks. The Sierra Nevada mountains, they get a huge amount of snow each time this year. Um, it's it, Apparently, she says it's enough to go over a Sasquatch head in a lot of places. So, yeah, that makes sense. Here in the Cascades, we get eight or nine feet of snow. How do they cope with snow that that's deep? Or do you think it bothers them? I think they move out of the area. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna move just like the 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 elk and the deer don't stay up there in those areas. So uh, <clears throat> obviously, Sasquatch has to eat. So they're gonna follow the the prey animals out of that area. You're not gonna find predators uh, just hanging out up there. You know, although, unless it's a bear that's already hibernated. Although I will tell you, in the '80s when I was first working the Southern Washington area, whenever I'd find tracks up there, it was right at the snow line, and the footprints were going from low to high. I never found any tracks coming down out of the snow fields. They were always going up. So I'm sure they were they were probably venturing you know, down for things, but they were heading back up into the snow fields. Well, yeah. maybe they've got caves or something that they're holed up in up there. You know, that could be a possibility too. Well, Will, why didn't you follow them up there? Snow was too deep. I'd follow them, you know, tracks. You'd follow 60 <laughs> to 100 tracks, and then the snow was getting deeper as you were going up, and... You know, you get to a zipper level and it's time to stop. 
<laughs> well, and there's another thing to think about, and skiers run into this, whether you're alpine or Nordic, and uh-huh. that is if you go next to a tree that's and it's in deep snow, uh, those trees create a well, and you fall into it right mm. there at the trunk. Right. And a lot of people have died from that because you go into it, you don't come out. So anyway, food for thought. Okay, Janice has a second question. She says, hello, Tom. Uh, and a couple of stories I've heard spreading sulfur around the property lines will, dis- will discourage Bigfoot visitations. Do you think it works? And if so, would carrying a pouch of sulfur on a hike be worthwhile? I think that's a really thoughtful question. It's a very good question. It is. And then there's... Um, Lastly, she she adds, she says to Forrest, do you know how primates in general respond to sulfur? I have no idea how they respond to sulfur. Never had the uh, cause or the reason to test that on them. But (laughs) sulfur will certainly deter um, flicks at Fleas and ticks, nothing like them. Maybe there are flicks out there. Uh, Fleas and ticks. um, But I would think that probably anything that is odiferous, that something that if we don't like it, more than likely any other type of primate's not going to like the smell. So uh, it it might be, it might work. I know Will has talked about bleach, and um, I know that... um, uh, of course, now urinating on things, I think, has produced rather unpleasant reactions from Bigfoot. So it's a territorial uh, I'm not situation. That you, yeah, you don't want to go around doing that. But uh, sulfur, on the other hand, uh, you know, it repels certain insects and it very well may repel uh, Bigfoot. So, I mean, it's worth a try. I mean, I don't know. What do you think, T.W.? You know, it's interesting. What's that, T.W.? Yeah, I know pepper spray well. <laughs> you you had a rather <laughs> uh, a different experience with that, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was getting surrounded, and I, that's all I had with me was uh, well, I had a gun in the truck, but the truck was like thirty feet away, so I had a can of pepper spray on me and uh, started spraying a circle around me, and boy, they they got a little upset. <laughs> uh, they let me know that they didn't. Pre- Spraying the pepper spray out, but you know, pepper spray puts out a, a, a pretty noxious scent, anyways. Uh, I mean, it smells like burnt chili peppers, uh, and boy, they did not like that one bit. I now, would, if you talk to a couple other people, uh, go ahead. I was gonna say, I would think anything with a real strong odor like that, especially if it's in a situation where it might be perceived by them as a territorial marking. You know, if you've got a stronger scent than theirs, then, yeah, they're probably going to get upset that you're the, the bigger, badder dog in the situation. But it would work. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, T.W. And that, and that, uh, uh, another question, is that going to cause them to, to you know, uh, go on to, a, you know, a, a more of a uh, an offensive posture where they're, they're going to attack? Good point. Yeah. Uh, I kind of wondered about that after I'd done it. But, you know, well, that's you, what I was but it allowed you to get your truck, right? Uh, well, it gave me enough time to get to my truck and get the hell out of there. Yeah, exactly. That's uh, that's kind of the point. About yeah, that's kind of the point, though, I think. Uh, but, uh, was I it, was it bear stuff, spray? Uh no, I didn't have bear strength. Uh, bear strength is like 18 million Scovilles. Uh, I had I had just regular crap that I use on turd heads that you know okay. don't want to comply with the orders. Right. So, and that worked. That worked just fine. I imagine if I had bear spray, that might have that might have had a little more of a of a, uh, uh, aggravated it. Yeah. Hang on. I swear to God, they don't know when to shut up. Uh, <laughs> they talk about some of the dumbest things too. Uh, but yeah, they uh, uh, it, 
talked to some of the other people uh, years ago when I was on good terms with with uh, Kumbo. Uh, Kumbo told me that they have a they have a very uh, a rather peculiar reaction to aqua velvet. They won't go anywhere near it. Huh. Uh, well, I got to tell you, I've never bought it in the store, so I have a similar reaction. But uh, <laughs> uh, um, I had a soldier I, that liked to drink it, but he was a severe alcoholic, so I, you know, <laughs> I had to put him in So I'll have to tell you guys a story off off the uh, air about October. Oh boy! Okay, let's move on to the next question. <laughs> um, right. <laughs> um, well, the other question is, and this is from Steve, and he wants to know if if uh, Bigfoot are are they only found in the deep, deep wilderness where you have to hike in miles and miles into uh, wilderness, or can they be found in other areas that maybe, you know, uh, like off in the wilderness area, but just off the road a little bit? Well, I got to go back to John Green's. <laughs> card file calculations he did in his book in 1968 where he said what they came up with this is based on reports that 70 percent of sightings were on or near roads so that tells you yep. they're closer to road yeah. networks than they are in deep areas well we had somebody who we shall remain nameless mm -hmm. but he told us he said you'll find these things actually have their habitats 150 to 200 yards off of roads. Yeah. You know, in the forest, obviously. Well, and but, it makes sense um, because that's where a lot of the food yeah. is. You look where deer are. Okay. You know, they, they go, the, they use the path of least resistance. So there are roads. That's why there's so many that are hit by cars, power lines, railroad, you know, through affairs, places like that. You know, these open areas, animals are going to go the path of least resistance. So, you know, where the food goes, they go. Well, what about last summer when we got surrounded by that group that was, it wasn't wood knocks. It was serious tree smashings. And we were 150, 200 yards max. Right. From, from a road, you know, from a, from a well-traveled road. Every, it was two in the morning or everything, two, in the morning. Everything we experienced that week was near road systems. It was. It really was. And I look back. And we hiked on, cross country. I gotta say about a. Yeah, we did hike we cross did. country a few times, and and all the evidence was near those roads. Near the roads, and I gotta say, I think all of the encounters and evidence that I've run into has always been near the roads. And we were also told that if you get deep, deep into the wilderness, there's bigger things out there. We don't want to run into the bigger things. So we'll just leave it at that for now. Um, well, I know that, uh, you know, I, last summer I was talking to the chief of police of Pahuska, and he was telling me they actually, they, they've been coming into town on a regular basis and had for years. You know, to, to all the state Indians, they, you know, it's just common knowledge that they come into the, in the town of Pahuska and, and Osage mm -hmm. and uh, Whitehorse all the time. Well, you... wait a second. If they're coming into town, are people seeing them? Oh, yeah. Catch them in the dumpsters and the whole nine yards. Well, and Chuck talked about that in Oklahoma, and I got the same information from native yeah. folks in northeastern Oregon. So, yeah, we know that happens. Or not northeastern, southeastern, I'm sorry. Southeastern well, Oregon, you, Northern don't we have, California. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Forrest. Uh, Chuck is calling. Well, I, Chuck is calling me for some strange reason. Oh, I got a message from his um, son just now, too. Um, <laughs> should I answer? I wonder. I wonder if it's an emergency. Uh, his son told well, if me. If you want to. His son told me that um, he was sleeping and he wasn't able to get on to the show earlier, but he said this coming week, Chuck is supposed to have eye surgery on both eyes. You should be able to get most of his vision back, according to the doctor. 
Okay. Well, he hung up. I didn't. I didn't answer. So okay, it might he be his son calling. And I, was sleep- I, I was sleeping. Yeah, uh, he called me last night, and then he was, uh, and I was sleeping at the time, so I didn't get to see it until this morning. Right. Okay. What were we talking about? Oh, yeah. Well, I'll start to say is, don't we have? Uh, uh, we have recorded instances of uh, them coming into towns uh, up in uh, Arkansas, and I, I will tell you this, that I had a gentleman from a ranch up in northwestern Arkansas that had purchased a horse from me, and I took it up there to him. And um, I, you know, of course, being Arkansas and the uh, talking about you know, the different, uh, the Falk monster and all that. Of course, that was right on the Arkansas border with Falk and Texarkana there with uh, te- Arkansas and Texas. But uh, he said that, oh, well, hell, he says you should have been, it was on the news this morning that, uh, and I, I've, I've had this occur a couple of times, uh, once in Oklahoma and then, and then uh, and, uh, there in Arkansas. And they actually, he said, they were, it was all over the news this morning that somebody had seen one, walking down the main street and it was just this is just a little town kind of like mine you know three four thousand people and um it was walking down the main street looking into uh peering into the the shops and stuff looking in the windows you know like it was window really? shopping well you know in the morning we talked about carol so, on campfire talk this past one and that's what she's happening right now i, I just texted her asked her how many people live in the little town where she's at but i think it's very tiny but the creatures are coming right in there. You know, they're not going out to the five acres she used to have that her nephew purchased that was outside of the town. Now they're coming right in the little town. So, you know, we see this happening more and more now. We talked about that behavior change that's occurring. Yeah. Well, and I, I told you when you, you sent me those pictures and stuff, and I didn't go into a lengthy detail because I'll be honest with you, uh, I was about half, I wasn't feeling real good yesterday, and I was kind of about half asleep when I got those, and I looked at them, but, you know, I remember I said, oh, no, oh, my, my, or something Mm -hmm. like that, when you, and she put the, when she put the clothespin up on the the curtain, saying that that's where the head was, and, uh, and then she showed us a picture of the window uh, from the outside, and that window's quite high up off the ground, so, (laughs) it's kind of like, it's like my windows around here, and, and then, you know, she did tell me something about some of the behavior that she had exhibited. And I thought, you know, I got to thinking about that last night, Will. And I need to make a call to Carol. And, of course, she doesn't do that anymore. But I think um, that that could be uh, – that's not really good. I, that would disturb me. If you've got a bunch of males that are hanging around your house, they're window peeking. Let's, you know, I'm going to tell you this. Primates are voyeurs. They really are. They'll just sit and stare at you all, all the time. You know, they're voyeurs. And and coming in and peek, window peeking in a woman's house, I think there's more to it than just, uh, you know, just the window peeking. So, uh, and that even caused me some consternation. And you remember when we discussed about the fact that something was shaking the door that, that night here, what, a week and a half ago, uh, that my dog got out. And here, you've got nothing but two women in this house here. And uh, why are they trying to get in? Well, you know what I think? I think what she needs to do, maybe you need to do it as well, is you get solenoids that are Bluetooth activated. And underneath them, you put in those pepper spray things. And as soon as you see something outside the window, you push the button and And these things get a (laughs) snoot full of pepper spray. Maybe they'll figure there's better houses to go voyeurism on or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Go voyeur on. <laughs> you go voyeur on. Yeah, I, I absolutely. Get, I got to get some kind of. Uh, um, I wanted to order some of those uh, uh, doorbell. You know the doorbell things, the doorbell cameras that my daughter has them on her house, and um, <clears throat> they've since installed them for uh, on their house. So um, anyway, I think that's what I need to get for here is some doorbell cameras so that I can uh, record what, oh, what's going on out since there. You, since you said that, um, my cousin David actually wanted to know if you wanted some of those, he'll send you some. Well, actually, that's I think that's he, yeah. I told you earlier that, that he was texting me. I, I told and, him to, yeah. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, he was he was texting me and while we were doing the show, and and that's what he was asking. Uh, that must have been what he was asking. He said, I, uh, "Can you give me your your mailing address?" And that's what I was doing was typing my mailing address while we were talking. So uh, he must have been, you know, that that's what it was. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, because he he's going to send Carol some of that those too. He's actually sent her some already, but he wants to send some more, and he wanted to send you some too. Well, I kind of think, now this is my own feeling about this, guys, that these <clears throat> that these animals in certain areas have been habituated and they have been, they come, they have become accustomed to human behavior so much that our behaviors don't bother them anymore. Well, T.W., you know that from Las Cruces, how often they're coming around there. Oh, yeah, they, uh, well, I, you know, I, Here's the thing. I don't think that they they necessarily become accustomed. I think we've just we've we've degraded their habitat so much through urban sprawl that they really don't have anywhere else to go. And they've also discovered that uh, you know we are actually easy food sources. Well, yeah, true. That's what I think too. Uh, sometimes. Because we well, yeah. we leave so much laying around. Look at I mean, how much look at how much food throw away in dumpsters. Oh, and the, well, lots of stuff. Like, Habituation. Yeah. Yeah. You, what's the one thing you hear the most of on any of these reports in urban areas? They're around dumpsters. Yeah. It's almost like bears. Well, you know, so, Will, this that's that's interesting because uh tw you're not the only one there's a lot of people that are reporting that and uh will you know the area that we were in mm -hmm. last year that that right. the huge rippy metropolis that we're at that has yeah. that big foot the, the whole three buildings there <laughs> yeah the whole three buildings <laughs> that's the town <laughs> yeah two of those buildings have multiple dumpsters, dumpsters. Mm -hmm. and uh, but they're chained up and i I didn't think of it at the time that we're out there, but next time I'm up there, I'm going to take a look at those dumpsters and see if these, if there's any evidence, because think about it, they could go there. Nobody would notice them at two 30 in the morning. And it wasn't that far from where we got surrounded by those things. So I don't know. It's, it's a thought. I can tell you when I first moved to Southwest Washington back in the mid eighties, and started looking at the areas out there, and I was taken out by by the newspaper reporters, uh, and I reported the uh, photographer for the local paper that I was dealing with at the time, and he grew up in the area, and he showed me up on the Washougal River where people would go out there on the weekends to party, and they'd leave food trash all over the place, and this was a weekly occurrence every week, and lo and behold, the creatures were seen there on the weekends. When the people were gone, but they were going through the garbage. It was well known. In fact, right there was where I had my second sighting of that big gray one. It was within really? maybe 200 feet of where the party goers would be. On the river? On the river, yeah. Well, look at uh, bears. I mean. <laughs> same I, thing. I, I yeah. I mean, you don't have to have a high level of intelligence to figure out that people are stupid and we we are also terrible about picking up our trash, oh, and yeah. that we're just a, we're we're just uh, you know we're basically lazy. lazy. So animals take advantage of that. Sure you know, do. you know, well, I, I'm just wondering if I should maybe talk to the owner of the restaurant. Will you I know would. the one I'm talking about? I would. Yes, absolutely. And my wife used to babysit her uh, uncle or somebody. <laughs> get get some mileage out of that, Tom. I uh, get some more <laughs> mileage out of that. Yeah. <laughs> she just well, rolls her eyes minute. now when I bring that up. We, we <laughs> laughed because that was a that, that was an ongoing. Is that well, the restaurant with the great? Is that the restaurant with the great Bigfoot Burgers? Yeah, the they Sasquatch have Burgers. they have yeah. Bigfoot. Okay, yeah, 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 they do. Yeah, they do. I've been there. I've been there. I told you. Yeah, I've been there. <laughs> a half a half of one of those burgers will it's just about knock you for a loop. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's way more food than you can eat. Tw, you got to come up sometime and go with us to this place. <laughs> oh man, I'm telling you, it's good right. stuff. It's a beautiful well, area anyway. Here's something for the next show. I don't think we got time this today. No, we're running but, out of time now. But but I want to hear, you know, talk about Bigfoot in urban areas. Uh, TW had a situation where a bunch of dogs were torn up. And we can't go into it today because we don't have time. But I'd like to get some 
details on that and how close to a town and all that. So, TW, if it's okay with you, if we put that on the back burner and and talk about it oh, next, I, is that a yes? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Oh, awesome. I just I just got a text from Carol in Missouri. I was curious about the population of the town she lives in. She says uh, she says it's around two thousand people, so it's pretty small. Yes, I got one same as mine here. Yeah. All right. Well, let's. Uh, it sounds like we've got some good stuff to talk about, and I got a few questions uh, for the next uh, next Q and A. So, uh, well, folks, keep sending those questions in too. Uh, we've made the Q and A a little bit shorter, which is good. That means you know we we always have plenty of questions. Sometimes we run out. So, <laughs> but I actually have a long list of them. You know that people have sent questions at GreekDevil dot com and. If you like the show, let us know. Click the like and subscribe. And if you want to support the show, it really does help us to get out and get the information out in the field to you guys. Um, we have a if you're on YouTube, we have a link in the description for Patreon. And for as little as a dollar a month, you can support your favorite Bigfoot show. All right. Any any final thoughts, guys, before we wrap up? No, I'm it, it, enjoyable as usual. Bigfoot and garbage cans, I'm telling you. That's it. Yeah, uh, yeah. you can't get any better than that. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, T.W.? Nope, I'm good. All right, well, thanks for joining us, folks. Thanks for listening to this episode of Creek Devil. If you or anyone you know has had an encounter with these creatures please contact us at williamjevning at yahoo.com. That's William, J-E-V-N-I-N-G at yahoo.com. All communication is confidential. Join us for another program next week. And until then, keep your eyes open now.